In a recent video, I talked about a solar capacitor tester, and a viewer sent in a question about the power factor control. I quickly responded, and then I got to thinking about his question, and I realized that I had probably given too short an answer to the question about power factor. In that answer, I said that basically power factor, except in the power industry, was largely a thing of the past. In other words, it was no longer present on testers and so on. Also, in that same video about the solar, I pointed out that it won't test ESR. Well, technically I'm correct, but the, the issue is a little bit more complicated than that. And so I thought I might make a video that talks about the relationship between ESR, that is equivalent series resistance, and power factor. In getting ready for that video, I took some capacitors out of my stock. Up there you see a drawer that holds some 2.2 mic in the front and 3.3 mic in the back. And I took out the capacitors that you see there. On the left are some larger capacitors. They are 3.3 mic, 50 volt. And then over to the right, you see some smaller capacitors that are, uh, I'll call them little capacitors, that are 3.3 mic, 50 volt. Now, I bought all of these about four years ago. So they have been in the drawer for a little while. And down below are the first two that I selected from that stock. So, the question I'm going to ask for you to guess, and I'm going to hold up the answer until the end of this video, is do you think that both capacitors, the little and the big, are good? In other words, this. Do you think they are both bad? Or do you think one is good and one is bad, and if so, which is which? In other words, you have four choices. You can say the little one and the big one are good, the little one is good and the big one is bad, and so on. So to give you a little bit of a hint, I thought what I would do is show you on the multimeter what the capacity of these two units are. This is the little one. And you'll notice it reads 3.366 microfarads. Now it's supposed to be a 3.3. So now let's look at the large capacitor. And it reads 3.5, well, 3.498, Are they both good, both bad, or one good, one bad, and if so, which one? With that as backdrop, I'd like to now first talk about the relationship between ESR and power factor. In order to appreciate the relationship between the two, you need to understand that uh, a capacitor has a reactance, but it is frequency dependent. It's 1 over 2 pi Fc. And the reactance is measured in ohms, just like the equivalent series resistance. But as we'll see later, it's actually a little bit different. It's not quite the same thing as a resistor. But the equivalent series resistance is the value of this resistance inside the capacitor. Now, there's not they don't deliberately put a resistor inside the capacitor. This is just the equivalent of the resistance that the capacitor has. And... The ESR reading depends on frequency. The reason it depends on frequency is if you try to measure the ESR at a DC voltage, well, the capacitor, except for the small amount of leakage current, blocks DC. So the way ESR is tested is they raise the frequency high enough that they hope the capacitor becomes essentially a short circuit. In other words, you can disregard the capacity reactance, and you're only measuring the equivalent series resistance. 
So what about this capacity reactance? What kind of frequency do you need to uh, use? Well, over here I've shown a graph of, for example, a 2 microfarad capacitor at frequencies from 10 hertz up to 100 hertz. And you'll see that around 10 hertz, the uh, reactance of the capacitor is about 100 ohms. As you raise the frequency, it goes down, but it never really goes to zero, but it does get very close. And when you get out into the thousands and tens of thousands, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of hertz, the capacity reactance of most electrolytics goes down low enough that the assumption, that is, that you can ignore the capacity reactance and you're just measuring ESR, is, is fairly close. Let's now look, though, at the relationship between this ESR, the capacity reactance, and power factor. The first thing we have to realize is that the capacitor doesn't start out with a very low ESR at zero frequency. The difference between zero and the actual conduction at DC is called the leakage. And we've talked about that with regard to capacitor testing. From the leakage value, the ESR actually goes up with frequency. It doesn't go up nearly as fast, generally, as the capacity reactance, but it does go up. So you have a nonlinear curve here. You have the nonlinear curve on the X sub C, that is the capacity reactance curve. So Fundamentally, what most capacitor testers, ESR testers, do is they pick a frequency. And at that frequency, they are hoping that the capacity reactance is low enough that the ESR dominates. Here are two examples where that is not true. In other words, if you measure at too low a frequency, the capacity reactance is still big enough that for example, with this level of ESR, you get this vector. And the total impedance, that is what the meter will read, is the length of this vector. Similarly, if you have a higher ESR, that vector will be longer. In other words, with the same capacity reactance, or another way to put it is, at the same test frequency, the higher the ESR, the longer the vector, and therefore the higher the meter reading. So what is the relationship between that? Well, it turns out there's a very simple mathematical relationship. The power factor is simply the arc tangent. In other words, if you put x sub c, that is the opposite side of this triangle, over the ESR, this side of that triangle, then you get the power factor. So why did they use power factor back in the day, and today they use ESR? It's primarily because of the frequencies that systems operate at today. Most of the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors, in the old days, let's say World War II and before, the predominant signal that they were trying to filter was 60 cycles. And, of course, in a, in a full-wave rectifier, you get 120 cycles. But nonetheless, you get very low frequencies. Therefore, the capacity reactance was a significant part. And what the power factor is measuring is this angle. Now, I realize this definition of power factor is a little different than the one you might find on Wikipedia. The reason is... Power factor is also used in power circuits to determine what size capacitor you need to add to balance an inductive load like a motor winding so that you produce a pure resistance. The reason is all of the power is dissipated in the resistance. The power that's put into the capacitor during one cycle is recovered and transferred to the inductor in the other cycle except for the power lost due to resistance. And it's this resistance that causes the capacitor to heat up. If the equivalent series resistance is large, 
as you cycle this capacitor, whether it's 60 cycle or whether it's 100 kilocycle or kilohertz switching power supply, either way, the length of the ESR vector determines how much power is dissipated in the capacitor. That means not only how hot the capacitor gets, but also how much power is being removed from the circuit, like a switching power supply. So this is the relationship between power factor and ESR. So to a sense, the solar does measure ESR indirectly because it measures power factor and it measures it at a given frequency. So now let's look at what this tells us about these capacitors. The first one that I'm going to test is the little one and I'm getting the polarity straight here. Okay, you see it says that, it, that this one has 6 ohms of resistance or of ESR, which for a 3.3 microfarad capacitor is not good. Now let's measure the large one. You see that one it says the DC resistance is too low. In other words, the problem is that this capacitor, the large one, leaks too much. This is the peak Atlas ESR meter. Let me turn it on. And you see it says the capacitance is 2.96 microfarads and the equivalent series resistance is 4.96. 7 ohms. Well, if you use the chart on this meter, 4.7 ohms is barely good. That is, it would, uh, if you use that chart and you use this meter, you would say that's a good capacitor. So let's check the other one. And it says the ESR, once again the capacitance it says, is only 1.2 O2 microfarads, and it says the ESR is greater than 20 ohms. Now this meter won't read more than 20 ohms. So, in other words, while the DC88 couldn't read this capacitor's ESR, this, the, the Peak Atlas, says it can, and it's greater than 20. So therefore it's a bad capacitor. So in other words, both of these are bad capacitors. Okay, let's pick another one at random. This one, it says the capacitance is 3.05 microfarads and the ESR is 4.2 ohms. Now let's try the DC88. And it shows about 6 ohms. Now, the difference in the ESR doesn't bother me because here, for example, is a study of that was conducted by Anatech Corporation of a series of testers, including the uh, DC88 and the uh, Atlas uh, ESR70. And what they point out is these testers operate at different frequencies. So it's not unusual that they will get a different ESR reading. The important thing is that you have a, a chart that is matched to the frequency of the tester that shows you whether a particular ESR is acceptable, marginal, or bad. Now the funny thing is that when I tested the capacitors there, what I discovered is while the, the ESR of these little capacitors is high, probably marginal. All of these large capacitors were bad. Now once again, I bought these about five years ago, maybe four. They've been in this box ever since. They're, they've never been used, and yet every one of this batch is bad. You may realize, remember, that this multimeter thought that those capacitors were all good. They measured about 3 microfarads, which is what's marked on the case. But the ESR tester 
showed that they were bad, whether it was this one or this one, or at least I should say that the large ones are bad. The little ones actually are not. They are marginally useful. Looks like the uh, this says it wants to be turned off. So uh, that probably reminds me that I've talked a little too long. So let me close out by saying there is a relationship between ESR and power factor. It's not the one you normally will find in Wikipedia or someplace like that because that's really the power industry's definition of power factor. It really is the same thing. The difference is that here we are trying to relate equivalent series resistance to capacitive reactants. The power industry is more interested in real power versus apparent power. And while there are relationships between those, in other words, you measure one, it's like measuring the other, you, uh, they define it a little differently. Mathematically, they're the same measurement. So I hope this has been useful and helpful to people to understand that while a, a tester like the solar doesn't actually explicitly measure equivalent series resistance, the power factor is an analog of, or a, uh, if you will, a surrogate for equivalent series resistance. Similarly, equivalent series resistance, like is measured in this meter on the right, or this Peak Atlas meter, is also a surrogate for power factor. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope I'll be able to uh, make some more videos, but maybe on this subject I ought to kind of move on, although I did promise that at some point I would uh, try to do a review of uh, vintage capacitor testers, and I still intend to do that if I can. But in the meantime, have a nice day.